country that was that had legal help. I'm talking about all throughout the country, Kentucky, all the way down, and even it was funny is the first country, the first state that made it illegal, which was California, is currently the first state that made it legal again. So what's going on is as long as something will benefit the established um, monetary holders, then it's legal. Anytime that they substitute and have something else that they want to use to poison people, they will make something that has always been, which was hemp, the first agricultural product, illegal. Um, they also, it was also known that hemp would was um, less toxic than making paper. So, you know, it's just funny how, you know, these things work. And, um, you know, it just, it just got, it just got outrageous to where they, they knew that you could use hemp for paper, make more paper than you could cutting down trees, but they still decided to make it illegal back in the days. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just amazing what goes on these days and, you know, people try to deal with um, what is right or what is wrong. It never has anything to do with what's right, what's wrong. It has something to do with the, mo- the money holders, monetary people that um, is controlling the money. You know, they decide, they influence people's morality. You know, people are just sheep. So it's always good that people still continue on with um, marijuana, um, what they wanted to call marijuana now. What happened was that the term marijuana came from the um, use of the cannabis in Mexico. So that is a Spanish name for hemp. And, the, you know, and the cannabis is marijuana so that they can give it a negative stigmata just like cocaine usually being in Europe or South America then when it gets to America and the so the, the so called blacks get a hold of it, now it's called crack. But you know, that's another story. So again, what the assignment is for the student, uh, we want you to individually or collectively research the methods of manufacturing these um individual areas. You know, we have to get involved in having the oil, the paper, the clothing the plastic and the making of homes in the local community. So don't forget these categories. Number one, hemp has oil. Number two, hemp has paper. Hemp has hemp is converted into food from the seeds. Next, the hemp also, through the um, processing of it, it was used to make clothing. Second, it was already documented that hemp or the cannabis, this part, was already good for medicine. It was good for depression. Um, oh, the other thing, too, was it came back to become legal when the spread of AIDS and HIV came into the country in the 80s. See, all of these things influence it. Money always influences it. All right? So, again, um, one, oil, two, paper, three, food, four, clothing, um, five, medicine, six, plastic, um, seven, fuel, and homes. So we look up that. Now, the next category we want to deal with is um, the barbershop. Uh, well, basically, this is dealing with children, all right? Children in relationship to the barbershop. What I want to do is to bring um, honors and give acknowledgement to a brother um, named Michael Boone in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area. He has a nonprofit foundation that um, – that's involved. The difference between this barbershop and any other, the, way, the reason why I brought it up is because it teaches. It, um, the barbershop is a nonprofit foundation that brings in children, teaches them upselling, downselling, time management, and financial literacy. It doesn't just teach them to cut hair, be fancy, and so forth in that manner. You know, it, it teaches them in the other areas. So, 
you know, this is that's very important in itself is to make sure that the children understand. Well, the other thing is too, because the barbershop is the main area of our community and culture, on where we interact is, you know, it's definitely good for children to interact with each other through these venues. So, again, you know, the barbershop dealing with the children, you know, is where we want to emphasize telling them to go in and learn more, even as um, as the barbers to teach them how to deal with business and to count money and this um, and distribute it. So again, I want to big up Michael Boone. Everybody, look it up. The assignment underneath children for this episode is to learn how to interact with your local barbershops, see if they have any programs for children and um, so forth to get involved in their community. A lot of times the barbershops do have those things put in place. The um, next category that I want to bring attention to underneath our women is a sister named Dr. Nicole Farmer. All right, now what she did was Dr. Nicole Farmer, she helped minority entrepreneurs get million, millions of dollars in funding in the Detroit area. You know, this is historical and it's paramount. Um, I need for everybody, you know, to do what they can. If you hear this audio, let her know. If you're starting a business on your own, um, also reach out to her. You know, she's doing it. The the great thing about Miss Farmer is, you know, her backstory. Well, first, her company is called Lifeline. And a lot of times she said that in her article that the reason why she used Lifeline is because when somebody's an entrepreneur, you know what I'm saying, them surviving, and being successful, you know, this is a lifeline. She's helped up to 25 um, different businesses, you know, get their money. The major thing about her and her achievement personally is that she stated that she was, um, she had her first child when she was 14 in a group home, you know. So, you know, this is astonishing and praise is due to the sister for overcoming all of the obstacles. All right. So, you know, one thing that she deals with in, um, in here is financial projections. You know, she teamed up with Detroit Microloan Collaborative, and her website is thelifenetwork.com. Again, she teamed up with Microloan Collaborative, and her website is thelifenetwork.com. Dot com. Um, again, I'll be putting this into the comment section on the YouTube channel. And if you do have a business, you know, please go to her site. If you know people that are starting businesses that um, are new, that are fearful and they're scared, they don't know all the ins and outs, please have, her, have them reach out to Dr. Nicole Farmer. Big ups, everybody. Give her around the applause. That is the assignment underneath the category of women. All right. The assignment underneath the category of um, our story, we're going to get into, you know, something that always is overlooked. It's not, a, it's not really a big, big deal, but I want to bring acknowledgement that there was glass, you know, just, just for the knowledge sake to know that there was glass being produced in the Sahara and Nigeria. The site for this was the Igbo Olakun, the area where the Yoruba is. Now, what happened was, um, you know, a lot of people assume that they, that a lot of things that's manufactured and made these days is, was done in the West, but Glass was actually produced and made 
in um, this area between the 1100s and the 1500s, there was remnants found um, dealing with the shrines, with the, um, the shrines in the area, with sculptures, and the um, the main the main um, product or the, the main element that was used to make the um, glass was was lime and alumina. alumina. Again, that was lime and alumina. You know, again, bring attention to the Effie, the Ellie Effie. You know, that was the tribe. You know, they had glass beads. They found glass beads at this site. You know, so this was a very, very big historical find to let you know. And what the other part of it is is also um, the self-esteem. The reason why I brought this up is because for some reason in this country, you know, our emphasis when people say they have a lot of money is not in manufacturing. So I want to emphasize people investing in the area of glass. Um, glass is all around us. We use them in our windows. Um, women use them when they're getting dressed. We use them in our bathroom. Um, we use them in our living room. You know, so glass does still have a use. And also to let you know that your own people, you know what I'm saying, was a manufacturer. Again, look up using lime and aluminum to make this glass. Again, I'll be putting the link to this in the comment section of the indigenous media. The next section that I'm going to get into is law. Now, um, last week, I got into, we got into a little bit as far as the laws, the 42, well, the, um, the nine principles of Tehuti. Um, Tehuti's wife in the comedic culture was Mayat. So we're going to deal with the 42 laws of Mayat. What I'm going to do, and the reason why I'm getting into dealing with these, first, I always wanted to, before I got into man's law, I wanted to get into nature's law. The student has to be aware of nature's law and the application of nature's law. And the reason why is because nature, nature's law is superseding, is without the control of man. This is what is already in place, which is upon you. This is what you come out of. This is, um, this is your, your substantial foundation, all right? This goes into a lot of areas of cultures, of communities, and of buildings. So I'm going to go through these laws, you know, um, just to make people aware of these when they're listening to the audio, all right? This needs to be emphasized. The first law is that we honor virtue. If you have any young sons and young daughters, the main thing that you want to emphasize for them is to be virtuous. Right now, we don't have a virtuous society. This is February the 6th, 2019. Our society lacks virtue. Number two, our benefit, gratitude. Gratitude when somebody, you know, you know, is being humble. I am peaceful. This is the natural way that a person is supposed to be because it allows things to flow in and out of you. Um, I respect the property of others. Do not steal. It's what belongs to somebody else is theirs. What you have or what's coming to you, be thankful for what you have and um, your possessions and so forth. Um, I affirm that all life is sacred. Yes, all life is sacred because if it has life, it's there for a purpose. You know what I'm saying? You are not you are not the determiner of that life. So it is sacred. And it has benefits that is beyond beyond your comprehension. I give offerings that are genuine. 
You know what I'm saying? That's basically that when you give something, you know what I'm saying, it's from the heart. It has it has a pure giving. Um, I live in truth. Living in truth is just being honest. You know, you know, not not lying to yourself. You know, not lying to others. You know what I'm saying? Having a strong substantial to the way that you're living. I regard all altars with respect. That's um, you know, that's personal. I speak with sincerity. Sincerity, the tone and the pitch of your voice. All right, um, you know that determines how a message and how you know someone takes things. Um, I consume only my fair share. That means that you're not greedy. That you're not going to take what somebody else' um, provisions are. Um, I could I offer words of good intent. If you put harmonious words on somebody, words is power. That can affect people for days, months, and years. People will always remember what you say. I relate I relate in peace. You know, neither to go into that. I honor animals with reverence. You know what I'm saying? You got to you have to let the animals live, man. You don't supposed to be out here hunting these animals. You know what I'm saying? You have fruit and vegetables to live by. I um I could be trusted. Oh my goodness, this is the biggest thing in the world. People need to be able to trust you beyond a sight. People need to be able to trust your words. Um, I care for the earth. The earth is your foundation. This is what you're standing on. This is what you use your food. You know, um, you don't suppose to pollute the earth. I keep my own counsel. You mind your own business. Mind your business. I speak positively of others. Again, this deals with your tone and that you're not bite by it. Um, backbiting and waiting for somebody leaves and then talking bad about them. Women is good for this. Um, men is also susceptible to these attributes also. I remain balanced with my emotions. Emotions, you have to guide your emotions. You can hurt somebody. You know what I'm saying? You can affect children um, by being overly emotional. Um, I remain balanced with my emotions. Again, I am truthful in my relationships, people look for it. This is called integrity. You know, you have to have integrity. I hold purity, purity in high, high esteem. That means that you're not that you're not unclean, that you are not dirty, that you, you know, cl- cleanliness is not is not to godliness. I spread joy. Make sure that you come into people's lives in order to boost them up and um, you know be happy. I'm talking about everybody, the people at stores. The people at light, people at your job, I do the best that I can. You know what I'm saying? That's self-acknowledgement. I communicate with compassion. Mean what you say. Don't speak hollow words. I listen to opposing opinions. Listen twice as much as you speak. Um, I create harmony. Harmony is everything. You know, harmony, don't create disaccord. I invoke laughter. You know what I'm saying? Laughter um, releases hormones, um, pheromones, um, different chemicals that makes you healthy. I am open to lo- um, to love in various forms. It speaks for itself. I am forgiven. It speaks for itself. I am kind. It speaks for itself. I am respectful of others. It speaks for itself. I am accepting. You know, allow things to come into your life. I follow my inner guidance. You know, that is the first self. Of you, that is your, that is the God aspect of, that's the divine aspect of you. I convene with awareness. I do good. I give blessings. I keep the water pure. You got to keep the water pure. You can't pollute the water. You know, people see water and feel like they can throw anything in it. No, that water has, it's part of the ecosystem. It's part of fish. It what it goes into what deals with crops. Um, I speak with good intent. I praise the goddess and the God. I am humble. Stay humble. Don't be um, um, conceited. Um, I achieve with integrity. I advance through my own abilities. Don't um, don't achieve off of somebody else's ability. Do your own. And the number one thing in the forty two, the forty second law of Maya is that I I embrace the all. That is our affirmation. You know what I'm saying? I am one with the all, the all.
all is one with me. I am part of the all. The all is part of me. I am the love of the all. All of us in me. All right. So, again, with the 42 laws of Maya, you know, want you to make sure that you share this, with the, you know, this, the assignment here is to make sure that you, you are exercising these principles. Be aware of these. Share these principles with other students. Share these principles with other people. Make posters of these things. Do not let people forget, you know, um, in the time of them, their daily living in and out when they're, you know, when they're involved with groups of people that are negative. Remind them of the 42 laws of my eye. The other area of law that I want to get into was the um, interaction with the police. You know, keep your hands in sight. You know, um, when you come in contact with the police, um, don't be jittery. Don't stick your hands in your pocket. You know, keep your hands in, in sight um, if you're in person or in a vehicle. You know, um, make sure that you get your credentials out before being pulled over if you're in a car. If, um, you know, if you're in fear, in a fearful situation while you're on foot or so forth, don't just reach in your pocket for anything. Make sure that you make the officers aware and the knowledge that you're, if they ask for something, that you're going in your pocket to get what they ask for. All right? Um, don't complain about the situation that's going on. Once you complain, it, it's a sign that you're being agitated or um, in the mode of attack. A complaint to an officer is in the mode of an attack. Um, at the end, uh, at the end of any ordeal that you did not, if you have been okay, first let's acknowledge this: if you if you if you are engaged with an officer and it was your wrongdoing, acknowledge it, deal with it as an adult. You know, if it was something that was brought on um, um, by, you know, somebody else or for some unknown um, prejudice, then the remedy these days is to seek medical attention for trauma. You know, um, the, the next thing is I need for people to learn trademarks. Learn trademarks and learn copyright law. Um, you need to learn how to start protecting your creativity. Um, also, um, also learn another language. Learn another language, even if it's all the way to the bottom of sign language. Learn another language. You know, these are part of the law. Language is part of the law. Copyright, protecting what you create. Trademark protecting what you create because these other ethnicities, they copyright and trademark what they do. Um, the melanated woman and man, for some reason, does not want to invest in trademarks and copyright. Um, Utu, are you there? If you want to um, unmute yourself, if you had anything to add in, you can add in at this time. copyright and trademark things that we produce you understand right they yeah trademark things that we produce <laughs> so that gives them control over it case in point if you want to go into music you know chris brown i was just talking to um you know a, a, a part my partner and she was uh making me aware that that chris brown will be the youngest to own his uh his masters and also that the brother um 21 savage also owns his masters so that's that's huh. really interesting how they, um, that they both, both that they both got it yeah they both and, get the tat and right both of them are dealing with 
uh, countries that are uh, in, in, uh, European countries, you know, um, in Europe, in, in, as far as that's concerned, not not just European dominated, but in Europe, you know. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't know if that was in. Yeah, that's that's peace. Um, so um, the next category um, is under movies and music. You know, which we was leading to, and a little bit of the music. You know, um, the the category on on music that I wanted to to go into was. Uh, it was dealing with this sister, and um, let to bring up her information real quick. So, oh yeah, okay. So before I leave that, the um, the law category, the assignment, the assignment for the law is one for the students of a Ugansu University progeny of the Shi, Omet Yeah, um, Omet Shi Yamasi. Um, indigenous, Moors, Aboriginal parties is the assignment under these law is to first learn another language. You know what I'm saying? Whether the language is sign language or anything else, learn copyright law and learn the trademark, the law of trademark. All right. Also, um, keep in mind, keep in mind the um, aspects of interacting with the police and also um, share the 42 laws of my eye. All right. Now under the category of music and movies under music, um, the sister put out a video called the blackest truth. The reason why I like this video, um, well, actually on Facebook, or if you go research it or put it into Google, it's called the blackest truth. All right. Um, the sister made a video in reference to melanin and music. Um, the good thing about Talk Shoe Live. This episode is being recorded and streamed live on TalkShoe.com. You are joining the online studio. You are unmuted and can speak with the host. Recording started. Recording started. Did you just log in um, to the chamber? Yeah, I tried to go in on the on the um on the other thing. That's why that happened. I had two of these up. I apologize. Did you come you came out of it? Yeah, I came out. Okay. All right, so um to the now the information as far as what the sister was um going over um underneath the blackest truth, it was in reference to music dealing with melanin. Um the emphasis behind this is the fact that melanin um uh, receives light. Um the light and sound. The main thing is that um we deal with with us being highly sensitive to sound and light waves, all right? Um, this was important because this influenced um, how we exchange energy. Uh, music was a manner in which how we exchange um, energy. Also, it also went into the brain waves and how we, we actually carry what we did with music, you know, after a song went off we still perpetrated the functions of music. So what, what was being emphasized that she shared was the fact that um, the other cultures knew how important and how influential music was on our people. This is from childhood all the way to adult age and so forth. And so there was a lot of tactics. There was a lot of attack tactics that was used um, also, this was the music was used in, in collaboration with the prison industry in order to put out gangster music um, in the mid '90s. It kind of supplemented all of the harmonious music that was being produced by artists. I mean, just completely wiped it out. Was taken over by major corporations and instituted in order 
to influence negatively the um what is it called the hurts and the hormonal factors in order to cause you to act like a zombie or disagreeable and the fact to where the music was in conjunction with violence and drugs they they promoted the they promoted the youth to perform music that was conduent to the use of drugs and violence. Um, so this was important, and this all tied in to our melanin. Um, you want to take a look at this? Please research um, these, you know, this information for yourself. Um, that is under the category of, of music. The sister, the blackest truth. She explained it. Um, great on a video. I, again, I'll put link in, um, in the comment section. The movie section I wanted to share was called The Last Disciple. This was um, about, this was a good movie. It was, you know, melanated, um, surrounded. Um, it, showed, it showed brothers in a good light. That's another reason, again, let me say the name of The Last Disciple. The, the movie really touched me. It was a good directed music movie. It was about the family. It was about the melanated family. It was about a brother trying to do good in this community. He had virtues. He had integrity. He had um, interaction with his family. Um, you know, he had a good relationship with his wife, with his child. Um, you know, one of the main things was, like a lot of brothers, um, he was hard-headed. You know, he kind of didn't you know, didn't think, just like a lot of people, that, you know, when things is bad, they can get worse. Um, so the movie went into the preliminary effects of, the, you know, the actions that occurred in Louisiana when the levees broke. So, again, um, the assignment is for everyone to view The Last Disciple, the second, and that's for movies, and the assignment is to view The Blackest Truth. All right, so the last one is, uh, oh, do you have anything to add in on that, um, Usu? Um, not, not much as, as far as the, the uh, actual uh, assignments are concerned, but on the topic itself, you know, um, over, over, the, over the years, there's been a lot of people that have, have been coming forward that are a part of the music industry that, that basic, basically break it down and, and and let you know what the get down is and let you know that it's being um, dominated and, and controlled and, and distributed, which is the key part, by these um, demonic entities. And I say demonic in a colloquial sense, you know, as, as people understand what demonic is, you know what I mean? But, but definitely nefarious and definitely um, not with your best interest as a melanoid being uh, ebonoid being on in this landmass, not, not with that in mind, you know, uh, only to use it, <laughs> only to use yours and, 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 and benefit, but never to help you. It's, it's, right. Yeah. Right. So, oh, another thing um, to get more in depth with the, um, the effect of the, uh, the uh, changing of certain notes and, and, you know, introducing certain types of instruments concerning music. Um, one of my first uh, books that I came across that really broke that stuff down to me was uh, The Man from Planet Risk, written by Dr. Malachi Z. York. So um, that's a great scroll. It has a great um, section in there that talks about the effects of music, how music has changed over the years, and um, the type, you know, the, the neurological effects as, as, as well as the um, subliminal um, implications that, that have been um, put forth in music and stuff like that in, in entertainment. <coughs> That's all I have on that, though. Okay. All right, so what we'll do is um, we're going to go into the last subject which is public relations. Um, the, the area that was, you know, you know, these subjects I, I want to hit on, I'm hitting on um, 
you know, they they come across me, and I hit on them because not just of what the surface topic of it is. I always look in, in, in depth into every topic. You know, um, that's just a trait that I have. Um, I, I, I look into depth on things, and so um, what I was doing was um, I came across a part to where the people, we know that um, certain ethnicities, you know, you know, we can we can live next to each other, but people didn't want to live amongst each other. So the illusion of being integrated but still segregated. So what ended up happening is the current culture of people with monetary or money, what they end up doing is they want to, you know, they get away from being lonely. So what they start doing is taking their money and buying up the um, the inner city areas. And they, they, you know, what we have within the last five to ten years um, is, is um, what's the term called, Utu? Um, gentrification. Yeah, gentrification. All right, so part of gentrification is what they term called agri, agri-hood. You know, this, let me spell it, A, um, A-G-R-I. H O O D S. Um, what they what they did with the agriculture now. I'm I'm not saying it in a derogatory manner because it's someone else doing it. I'm I'm going to give the positive and the beneficial aspects, but there's there's deeper there's deeper meaning and deeper consequences and deeper effects um, to the cause of this occurring. So what they did was um, this these agriculture includes um, outdoor communities. Um, they have solar plant um, panels. Um, they, they have crops and flowers that they, what they're, they're doing is they're going and they're buying up the um, buildings, renovating them, and, and you know, they're, they're making them what they call, they're giving them what they call a social benefit. But at the same time, the cost of these, locations is above probably what some people pay for a house uh, for their houses and this is in order to have a certain type of people so again the people that have funds this is what they're doing they're coming back into the inner city they're buying up the, the inner surrounding areas um, and they're upgrading them which is a good thing but this is the illusion of inclusion to where the, the other people that was generally in the area are being pushed out. When at first people didn't want to come there, didn't want to be a part of the area, now they're coming there because they don't want to live, they, they want to live by you, but not with you. Um, so again, um, be aware of this new development called Agrihood. Um, the other thing is want to bring attention to. Let me see if well, let me see if there's any other details on the um, agrihood that I want to bring about. Um, well, no, I'm gonna just leave. I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna leave it there. I put the link in the um, comment section. Can I make a comment on about that agrihood? Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Um, Atlanta, right now. Um, the West End is is historical for being, you know, um, a place where our people did business and and thrived. Um, it was it was it's historically and was an affluent place for our people. It was like a, a mini Wall Street, but it was more of a whole strip in neighborhood. You know what I mean? Um, the West End has a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, quote unquote, black history there. And um, now what you see is um, a lot of different ethnicities, but mostly, mo- mostly Albion's, you know, um, Caucasoids um, moving into that area. And they're doing just that. They are um, moving in, they're fixing up the houses, they're um, growing food all out in the, um, 
you know, beside the on beside the sidewalks and stuff like that. They're doing that. Right in the West End of Atlanta. Wow. Case, case in point, this was actually something that they uh they, they took from Jamil Alamine because that's that's what he was doing, formerly known as H. Rat Brown. Jamil Alamine was in the West End in that same neighborhood, and he had cleaned up the neighborhood. He had he had people patrolling the streets, you know what I'm saying, that kept the drug dealers off of the streets in the neighborhood so that people were able to walk around and and children were able to come out and play again in that neighborhood because it had gotten really, really um, bad. It had, it had get, gotten really bad with the drugs and stuff like that and, 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 and the violence over there. But when Jamil Alamin moved in, he was cleaning all of that up. And um, they put a hit on him, <laughs> case in point. They put a hit on him, and now he's, he's in um, Florence, Colorado, maximum security, supermax. Um, right now, but yeah, <laughs> it shows you what, like, um, that, um, we, we, inv we come up with a lot of these ideas first and, um, uh, in, in terms of, of, of doing better for our neighborhoods and they always criminalize us behind it. So we have to be very, going back to law, we have to be very, very, um, um, dubious about learning how to how to how to um, affect law you know what I mean? and, and in each of these cases by by making sure that we protect our intellectual and physical properties etc but um i don't want to go too long on that but um yeah that's what that's what they're doing here in 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 atlanta um in the west end right now as we speak and uh, in other parts of atlanta as well but the west end is uh was like the law it's like the last stronghold as far as uh, the inner city, black culture, um, and and any any type of uh, longevity in terms of a, a community of people, our people. It's like it's like the Harlem here, you know. Now Harlem is gentrified. The West End end is becoming gentrified as we speak. Man, yeah, it's crazy. Um, you know, it's you know because, I mean, it's it's one, it's it's you know. Well, I, okay, I ain't gonna go in too much on that. Um, we can always get into that on on you know at the point. Leave your comments in the in the comment section if this is a topic or these topics that you want to discuss uh, further. We could have private calls on these um, at a later time. We welcome those, but we won't have them until. Um, there's enough people that make an interest that these things need to be discussed in order for a plan of action to occur. The um, next thing under public relations wanted to get into was the Black Wall Street board game. Um, now, this is something that, you know, made me very, very happy, very, very proud, you know, um, that a sister and brother had came up with um, – a board game for Black Wall Street. Um, I don't. We don't want to assume that everybody knows what Black Wall Street is or was. Um, Black Wall Street was um, in, to in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, the emphasis behind Black, Black Wall Street was this area that was highly populated melanin people made more money in this area than the entire United States. Um, what the emphasis on this, which, you know, we, we have since, this is 1922, so let me bring the date into place. 1921, 1922, this year is 2019. This is almost 100 years ago, all right, that we had areas of new and melanated, or what my brother would to say, I like the term, ebony 
you know, Ebony Daughters. You know what I'm saying? We had um, Ebony um, or Ebo, Ebony um, police officers, um, scientists, um, airplanes, manufacturers. We built the buildings. We built the schools. We built the houses. You know what I'm saying? We, we had import and export in the area. So that's a little brief from behind the um, inspiration. And at this current time, at this day, the first edition is sold out. All right. So, you know, you know, I had to bring light to this. You know, it's it's just it's phenomenal and this is something that needs to be in everybody's household. They do have a second edition that is out now that you can pre order. Um they have them as bit poster, um, bit cardboards, they have the you know, the different elements. You know, on the website, they show you, they give you the board game. Um, they give you the, the cards, the pieces, and so forth. This is, okay, so when we say it's not just a game, this is a, a subliminal. This is something that it, that goes into your mind. This is inspiration. This is for your children. This is for um, families that come over to visit you. Um, when you go to other family members' houses, these are things that generate and spark ideas, spark conversations, spark entrepreneurship. You know what I'm saying? So this this board game by itself has way more meaning than just it being a board game. It has way more importance than it just being a board game because it's based off of something historical. Um, it's also um, it's, it's, it's inspirational. So, um, you know, visit the website. Again, um, the the website is www.playblackwallstreet.com. Um, also, if you Google this, it's two companies that made games. So it's not just this one brother and sister. It's another um, another another brother or another um, Ebony um, brother or sister that made that made a board game. Please get involved with this by Wall Street. Um, did you have anything to add in on that, O2? Uh, not that particular game. Um, I, I think I'm going to save save mine for the next, uh, you know, um, we, we had discussed um, previously a game that, that I mentioned to you. But I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait on that for the next broadcast because um, it's 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 it should be an assignment in itself. <laughs> Got it, right? no doubt. Yeah, so the assignment yeah, so the assignment is for everybody to, you know, research the Black Wall Street uh, board game, put in your order for that game. Um investigate, look up um the the agri hoods uh, for that part. Uh, we do still have a couple of minutes left on um, the recording. Um, Utu, if if you had any comments on any of the other sections, um, one, health, two, the children in the barbershops, three, Nicole Farmer and the um, Lifeline Network was dealing with entrepreneurs, with women, um, for our story with the, um, the the glass that was being produced in Nigeria, um, five the forty two laws of Mayat, and um, you came in on six the movies and movies, uh, music and movies. But if you have any comments that you want to make in the last five minutes, the floor is yours. Uh, I'll touch on I'll touch on our story concerning the glass. Um, um, if 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 I'm correct, um, I remember you mentioning previously that uh, the place where it was found was called Igbo Olokun. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So Igbo, yeah. Igbo, um, in Yoruba, it basically means grove or sacred grove. So that that would be the grove of Olokun, which is uh, what what they would call one of the Arisha that represents um the uh, ancestral energy and uh, the deep, the deep, 
deep seas, you know, the deep oceans, um, as opposed to Yemaya representing the, the, the upper portions, uh, you know, the upper strata of the, of the oceans. Olokun represents the deep oceans um, where, where the oldest life forms are buried. You know? um, but that's, that's, that's very interesting that um, it was found there. And also um, in the Sahara, uh, you know, according to many of the um, ancient stories, you know, there were, there were certain um, battles that took place where um, there's, uh, you know, it, the, the the type of warfare that, that they talk about in, in books like, in, in scriptures, I, I should say, like the Upanishads and, and things of that, uh, the Hindu Vedic texts and, and Upanishads, they talk about these wars um, with um, flying ships that, that had like basically lasers and, and other, other types of, um, advanced weaponry you know and um there's uh there's been talk that some of these um some of these wars took place over the sahara and and that's why it's so much glass is so widely spread out over the sahara because um because of the type of uh energy that was being used in this warfare in that sand so yeah so you can check that um stories about the anunnaki's wars the wars um these are the wars between the wars of the gods that's mentioned in the bible yet the book of <laughs> the book of the wars of the gods that's mentioned in the bible that's not in the bible <laughs> that would be <laughs> <your> anunnaki. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that would be your anunnaki stories and these stories about um the um the, the Hindu um, deities and demons doing battle in their vimanas. And uh, there's other stories that go along with that too, but those are um, some of the most popular, the Mesopotamian and the Indian um, stories. Okay, that's what's up. Well, we're gonna go ahead and close this, this um, episode out. We'll be back in um, again. We'll have the visuals attached along with our audio on YouTube. Um, we you know, definitely going to be moving forward on some things and some objectives and um, some opportunities for the introduction of some other family members that's going to be coming in, that's going to be joining us as the word spreads that we're, you know, we're back at it again and what we're doing. And we're also going to post some of the old episodes to give some, um, give some outline on how how we proceeded in the past so that people don't think that this is something new that we're doing um we're continuing on with our minutes and so forth so again we appreciate everybody that's tuning in again um subscribe to the channel and look forward to seeing you all soon again wadu wadu <laughs>